Hello and welcome to Bandy, a podcast about being flexible and all of the ways that means. Thanks for joining us. My name is Andy Young and I'm one of your spir- spiritual, mystical hosts. Joining me as always is our other spiritual and mystical host, Beth Martin. Beth, a pleasure as always. What's the crack? Hi, Andy. I'm so spiritual. And... I, know. <laughs> I, my, I barely meet that. How is your tongue? No, you're like that. He's doing tongue exercises no. for those who can't see. I Sorry. heard my tongue in an unspecified <laughs> manner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. Are you going to be doing that this whole episode? Yeah, I'm going to be making weird tongue. <laughs> doing tongue things uh, the whole time. Uh, that's just, fine. I'll do it. Very upsetting back. for Beth. Yeah, okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to hide your face. <laughs> um, okay. I guess I have an unpopular opinion. Oh, yeah. Topic. I watched Challengers. Finally. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, Yeah. So first I watched um, Call Me By Your Name. How was that? um, I've already seen it. And I was like, watch it again before you watch Challengers. And I watched it again. It's like, it's, it's, um, it's a masterpiece. It really is. Okay. I didn't watch it. I really, really, really like it. I think it might be on Netflix. So you should. should. Oh, okay. And we can Mm -hmm. talk about these things. Um, but I... Yeah, I was like, okay, it just like, and then I watched Challengers, and they're they're very different, so they I don't are. want. Yeah, they're I've heard so that. Different, yeah, so I don't want to like compare them too much, but I, I guess what I really liked about Call Me by Your Name is the way that he portrays. I guess with both movies, the way that he portrays, like, um, how do I explain it? Just like that sexual tension yeah and that played out in both movies but in call me by your name it was really more realistic Mm -hmm. and sweet and um and challengers it was like it it was almost like robotic it's kind of it's kind of like jammed in your face like the whole movie kind of is the soundtrack's kind of like that you know yeah yeah (laughs) um but to be fair like i was like i'd rented it my mom was flying into town and I, mm-hmm. and I was trying to like watch it as fast <laughs> no. as possible. Like as, as they're driving from the airport and I'm like dealing with kids, but I was like, I need, I need to watch this. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's available now and I'm not going to have time for a week or whatever. And I can't wait. Like I, I'm just one of those people. Like if something is happening and it's available and I've wanted to do it, I can't yep. wait. So instant gratification girl right here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I was kind of like, Oh, this is it. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think I said that to you as well. But like, I mean, I I really didn't think it was going to be a film for everyone, but it is. It's an. I think it's not for, not for Beth. <laughs> it's certainly not. <laughs> but I think it's. I mean, you know, that's my first exposure to his films as well. And like, I am aware of his other films, but I, that was both the first one of his that I saw, and I kind of wasn't expecting it to be. Well, for a start, I am such a sucker for. Like Trent Reznor scores and things like that, you know, with Trent Reznor and Atticus <gasps> Ross, they did that oh, score. Oh, I didn't know that. Me too. Okay, so tr- this is super random, but a Trent Reznor fact: Do you mm-hmm. ever go to like, um, I, they're they're really more prevalent probably in the USA, mm-hmm. but um, everywhere you go that has like a big heater and like you're in a big store and they've got like heaters in the corners, here they say Reznor and that's his family. Ah, yeah. So I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm rocking out with this heater, which is related <laughs> to Trent Reznor, man." Was I sh- shop for hiking boots or whatever? <laughs> uh, so yeah, little known fact: he's actually for, probably probably from a pretty wealthy family because these these things are everywhere, everywhere. I inter- I did not know that. Wow, he yeah. is a uh... yeah. It's just fun to see the name Reznor anywhere. It just yeah. makes me happy. It so. does. It feels like such a kind of like, I don't know. It's just, it's just so associated with his sound for me, you know? So it's hard to like, and that's such a, like an angry sort of, you know? Yeah. Uh, but like, I, yeah, I've, I've always been such a fan of his stuff. And I think that's, and I think it's like, I don't know. I, I just have no real expectations going into it. And it just worked so well for me. Um, and I think I'd seen some other stuff that was absolute rubbish. In, in the lead up to it so i yeah. think yeah that lifted it for me in a, in a way yeah. you know yeah you're like oh this uh, yeah exactly anything yeah <laughs> um any other crack with you then um generally like uh so we were supposed to record yesterday but i had migraine uh-huh. i'm in a like my health i'm having a health flare up 
Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, so I'm like, my flare ups are like, I feel like I get, and this is like long COVID fibro, whatever. So I'm just going to bitch, but it's like, I feel like it flees in my brain. It's very disconcerting. That is disconcerting. Um, and, yeah. And then, uh, and I'm not on drugs or anything. It's just like, mm -hmm. I feel literally feel like there's something crawling around on the outside of my brain and then I get headaches. And then like, it's probably similar to like what I would think arthritis feels like, mm -hmm. like in your lower back, but I get it like from my neck all the way down to like my glutes. Mm. So I'm like covered in, I'm doing like Epsom baths. And then I'm I, here we're able to get this THC balm, like this cream yep. that I put all over and that, that numbs my, my body so that I can't feel it. Um, so yeah, I'm just like, meh. Mm. Man, <laughs> man. Yeah, <laughs> just make, making noises for the next five minutes. Yeah, right. Um, uh, and it's also the last week of school for the kids, so they're sadsies, and and I'm trying to um, be there for them while I'm also not feeling very well. So I think I, I'm. I, that's. I kind of nice that your kids enjoy school. <laughs> they are so, so many, sad. I know. So, do you so remember many of the kids I like, know? Sorry. Yeah. No, but like, do you remember school ending and you would be like, yeah. Summer's here. Hooray. No, they're like despondent. So, oh, wow. Well, yeah. Good for them. I know. I know. Um, good for them. <laughs> well, I know. So, what's yeah. the crack with you? Um, so, I had a birthday recently. Happy um, so birthday. If you're listening to the podcast it. now, it's appropriate to uh, sing happy birthday completely uh -huh. to me. We'll please. give you uh, 15 seconds now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, no, <laughs> Um, to, sing, to sing Andy happy birthday yeah so <laughs> I think Beth more than 15 seconds really like a full minute okay they can okay. and if, if they finish within that minute of time they can do it twice okay um, <laughs> no we're not really do that but um, and I appropriated it in the correct way um, with some beers while watching Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle and not live hell yeah hell Sorry. yeah indeed and then <laughs> You know, whenever the wrestling was over, settled into some dazed and confused, which is, you know, pretty a pretty good way to spend a birthday, right? If you haven't seen Dazed and Confused, the perfect hangout movie, just check it out. It's so good. It really is. Oh, so good. It's uh, like it's like it's it, it it's like this amazing movie that gives you nostalgia for a time that you weren't ever a part of or alive. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe we, were so. we 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 babies. When were we babies? Yeah. Um. The there's a great um. One of my kind of favorite scenes uh, in it is whenever they're at a party and one of the characters is talking about how the sixties were amazing, the seventies obviously sucks, the eighties are going to be great, and it's just like such a timeless concept of like the era that we the era that we live in is terrible yes. and all the rest are yes. great. Yeah. It's, yes. it's it was so it's so funny. And it's uh, funny like nineties nostalgia is a thing now. Yeah, that's like true. Like the 80s, like this was like 10 years ago, like the 80s like came back a little bit and everyone was wearing neon again. And I yeah. was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, and but now it's like 90s nostalgia. And like, we go to the flea market all the time in San Diego. It's this like huge thing outside a, a Coliseum and vintage clothing day. You would cry. Oh, really? It's like, it's like Billabong and like Stussy. Ooh. Yeah. Um. A global hypercolor t-shirts maybe perchance maybe maybe oh that'll be nice <laughs> there's that's those, that's what makes me think of the 90s more than anything else totally totally disgusting t-shirts that's all pitted out i'll get yep. it for you <laughs> gross. sorry i hijacked your crack <laughs> yeah no you didn't at all um so then uh, i also went to a, a music festival at the weekend which is great fun um so i'm going to tell you a little bit about my fits for the weekend. Number one, <laughs> day one, pink cabana suit, which Beth is saying that I wore in uh, uh, Costa Rica. By and... fits, by fits, he means outfits. Yeah, if you yeah. don't know what fits are, just oh, get with the program, right? <laughs> Andy's <laughs> over it. <laughs> it's over it. And Google it yourself. Yeah, Google it yourself. Do your do your own research. Is what I say about fits. And then day two, I wore. Uh, I've, I've been I've been I've been thinking about it for a while now, which is my utility kilt. Wait, wait, back up. You wore mm -hmm. the pineapple shorts? No, I wore my pink so a cabana suit, so the pink shorts and the pink shirt. 
gotcha. that I wore. I, that Did I had flamingos like, on it. No, it's just pink. Okay. Like a peach. It was. I wore them the last day when we were in Costa Rica for okay. our. Uh, you know that music thing that we went to. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, then day two, wore the utility kilt, had to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, got. What did I have? Oh, and a Hawaiian shirt, which I've been meaning to combine those for a while now, and it was. Perfection. Very nice indeed. You I sent got, me a photo. You, I did. I have been um, lots of compliments. I have my hair done up in space buns, I believe you call them. I call them barriers, but yes, space buns. Yeah. And um, lots of compliments, mostly from men, but I'll take it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had my hair down at one point as my friend was like doing my hair into space buns and he was like, he just walked past and he goes, gorgeous. And I'm like, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it i love it i love it um so, that's a crack with me so i have an occurring yeah do you want to talk about your the walk that you're doing again because oh i do actually are interested in hearing more about it and they also are wondering if i've had a couple people be like is he wearing his utility kilt Oh shit! I hadn't even thought about that. I should. I probably will. Actually, now you mentioned it, it should be pretty good for walking. Like, okay, I have to think about realities here because I'm walking 26 miles. So, let me just talk about what this is going to be at first, and then we'll discuss the utility of it all. Okay. So, for people who know Northern Ireland, I'm going to be walking from Coleraine. I'm going to be going north up to the coast from there, and then I'm going to be walking all along the north coast of um. Well, not all along the north, north coast of Antrim, but along the north coast of Antrim until I get to Carica Reed Road Bridge. It's marathon distance, which I believe is 26.4 miles. Can't remember exactly. And we're going to be doing that in a day, which is a lot of walking in a day, but I feel like I can do it. Can I ask a logistical question? Mm-hmm. Like, do you get dropped off and then like it's a, a circle or does someone like have to like van so- you back? We have to drive. Back. We have to drive our cars to the the de- where we're going to end up, and we'll be picked up from there and taken to the starting line. Okay. Um. How so, how far of a distance is that? I think so. It'll probably only be about ten miles. I think. Okay. By the roads, I would say I'm not sure exactly, but that seems about right. Okay. No. Actually, more like me, fifteen or twenty. I really, do. I'm not sure, honestly. If it's okay. going in that, it'll certainly cut off a lot of that, but maybe not quite as much as that. But um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, oh yeah, so the reason why I'm thinking about telekill in terms of practicality is that I have to think about chafing. You know, so, right? I, that that was my question. I was like, what's the chafing factor? Yeah. Uh, so, like, I mean, I don't know if it's the best idea from that point of view, but I will definitely give it some consideration. But I'm okay. looking forward to it. Well, it is for a cancer charity, should also say, Macmillan, which I think is because uh, my mom um, struggled with had a, a, a struggle with cancer last year. She's all clear now, um, thankfully. And um, yeah, I just think it's a very, always a worthwhile thing to support. Agreed. And um, I have shared it on socials. Um, I know you shared it on socials, mm-hmm. but um, please donate to this wonderful, wonderful charity. Yeah, and I will be sharing it more. something. Yeah, that's touched everybody. Yeah, at this point, and so um, the more that we can put towards research, the better off we will all be able to be. So very much so. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, um, do, what uh, what current stuff do you have? That was it. Okay. Thanks. Um. There are some people that were trying to suss out um, who it was that came to Ireland and were asking uh, funny questions about if they should bring toilet paper. Oh, okay. And I'm there... not gonna. Th- I'm not gonna throw those names out. So, I mean, like it is nobody. I don't even know if I would remember their names. Honestly, I never met them. It was okay. a friend of a friend, so it's not in okay. recent mist. It's not in recent times. It so was the like name about... doesn't start with a C. No. <laughs> okay. Then I can respond to this person <laughs> and say no. Keep guessing. <laughs> I want, okay, we need to take. I need, I need to hear who this was guessing and what they guessed okay. off offline. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, love it. Um, so yeah, no. Okay, it was funny though. Um, 
the people that were just like, is he wearing the kilt? Is he wearing the Utila kilt? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So now, now, now I have the answer and I can, I will respond. Um, anything else occurring with you? I don't think so. That's all that's really of important. I mean, I, I, I mentioned to Beth, the choir that I've been part of, uh, we had our show last week. That's kind of important, I guess. I mean, it's not super related to the pod, but it went well, the show went well. Um, you know, it's always nice to kind of see these things come together and quite well, I thought, um, I was really, I, I, I really think that they were fantastic at Christmas, but they have really leveled up you know it's 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 incredible what they are kind of doing now in terms of the complexity of the pieces and stuff they're doing and how well they're pulling them off so i it, it was it was really kind of heartening to see it all come together it's really so i got to sit in on a on a rehearsal yeah. and i thought that they were amazing so it's castle voices mm -hmm. on instagram yeah um and Carrick fergus so follow them follow them give them some love because Please. it's just what you've done, you're like, please, <laughs> what they've done, what you've done really is, you know, just watching all these people be able to come together once a week. It's really, it's like one of the sweetest things. I was sitting there. I can't remember which song I was listening to. And I was like, I'm crying right now. Yeah. <laughs> what I was, what, my eyes are leaking. Why? But it's just so, <laughs> it's so sweet. It's it so is. sweet. We did have, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, at half, uh, not half time, at the intermission, there was uh, we sang Caledonia. I don't know if you heard Caledonia whenever you we were I, there. I think I did. I think you did. And yeah. three people independently told me that Caledonia had moved them to tears. And you're kind of like, yes, <laughs> we did it. Right. So, yeah, it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> Emote. Emoted. Yeah. We have the bar. You know what we didn't do is mm -hmm. uh, create a title for. I know. Um, episode. I, Mediums I had... and mysticism. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so welcome to our topic of mediums and mysticism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, which is, you know, it's something we have had on our potential topic list for a while now because, well, I mean, I think it's something that we're both kind of, you know, it's an interesting topic, how our countries kind of handle it in different ways, I think is interesting. And also, you know, for better or for worse, it always gets tied to that kind of, you know, idea of spirituality, which is sort of connected to yoga in such a big way. Yes. I will also just, I want to add a little caveat that whatever I talk about today, I really have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm just giving, <laughs> I sent Andy, there's this, there's this guy, sorry, I'm just like, we ha I haven't seen you in two weeks, so I'm just blabbing, but I sent Andy this um, little sh video short it's this guy named Cole um, Esposa, I believe, mm -hmm. and he's it doesn't matter. He's doing this play called Oh Mary off Broadway, yes. and he goes on to Seth Meyers' show, and he's like, "So tell me about why you decided to do this off Broadway play called Oh Mary about Mary Todd Lincoln." And like, did you do any research? And he's like, "Oh, I did. I did less than no research, and I actively tried to forget things." And I was like, that's us. That's yeah. us. And that's so. the way to be. Like, and I mean, I think, you know, that caveat applies to all the topics we're talking about. But to be <laughs> honest, the vast majority of people who talk about anything, that caveat should be applied to it, you know? Because, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. But I think, it, you know, regardless, it's a worthwhile topic of discussion. And I think, you know, certainly the differences in terms of like, like a lot of the things we talk about, how the UK handled these, these things compared to the US is, is is something that will be, uh, I think, uh, be an interesting yeah. question. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to start there? I guess. Yeah. Um. Like I, I guess my question: <laughs> Do you have the psychic hotline? Um. Hmm. <laughs> That's a good. I I don't know that we do, but mm, I, we probably do that. Not you know, but I wouldn't be super aware of it. We definitely had things like that. So, like, we have, in terms of my uh, uh, understanding and my sort of, you know, connection to it, is that within Ireland and within Northern Ireland, we have a lot of psychics, mediums, who, like, tour the country in kind of smallish venues and make quite a good living from doing that. So, like, places, you know, in smaller towns that maybe wouldn't attract, you know, larger music acts or whatever sort of entertainment acts 
will often have like um, mediums, you know, will who will do the you know the cold reading thing where they you know find somebody in the audience and they connect. This is like a Baptist revival. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's 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 always kind of surprising That's so to me. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, that's still, I mean, I, I, I can't say I've seen posters for them recently, um, but I used to see them a lot and they would Have happen. you ever gone to one? No, but I have an interesting story about that sort of thing. So we, I had, so uh, uh, Car Castle, for example, had, this is not what I'm, I'm going to talk about, but I just want to lead, lead into this. Um, so Car Castle have, have had Halloween nights a couple of times. This is the castle um, that's like right by your grocery store and you can see it from your yoga studio and it's yeah. like one of the most beautiful castles in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one. Insta, yeah. <laughs> um, Just that castle. They had a Halloween night and it was great fun. It was like there was a lady pretending to be a witch in one of the rooms and she like pretended to cast a curse on us and we had people in masks jumping out and they were having a good time. They are having fun with it. We have a jail in Belfast called Crumlin Road Jail that also does Halloween nights. And having gone to the one in the castle, I was like, let's give this a go some, at one point. Um, we went we went to it, and it was very much ghost stories. It was, let's try to connect with spirits here. At one point, they brought out a teddy bear that they claimed could connect, could uh, um, detect psychic energy. And it had these LED lights in its eyes. <laughs> And whenever the like lights flicked more rapidly, then that was a clear sign that there was something like trying again. to connect with us. And it blew my mind because you know, again, I was expecting something more like the the thing in the castle, which was a bit of fun, like something a bit silly. So this was the last thing that I expected, and really, so that's the closest I've come to like a kind of a psychic, you know, reading event type of thing and it was not really for me at all I, I it kind of put me off a little bit so i have to back up to the the touring psychics mm -hmm. that's not <clears throat> that's not necessarily how it works here i know there are like psychics or mediums that are they have more like netflix shows <laughs> at this point like if they get popular enough mm -hmm. um but like you'll have psychics in towns and they'll turn like open and the psychic yeah. light will come on and then you know you can make an appointment and go see them um tarot or tarot is really popular yeah. those like types of readings and a lot of times those those cross over and, and intersect um i i have i'm i guess i have seen i guess there's a lot of different areas that I could walk right now, but um, in terms of like any weird experience that I've had, I love ghost anything. Mm -hmm. I love um, anything that's um, spooky. I, you know, like I was, I grew up next to a graveyard and like, I know I've mentioned this, so it's like, it's not scary to me necessarily those types of things it's more like under the bed stuff that so they're never gonna like grab my feet and pull me into who mm -hmm. knows where so i like i will actively seek out like oh this is a really haunted lighthouse let's go check it out and see if like <laughs> sorry you're you, for those that can see andy's doing his tongue exercises again <laughs> <laughs> um i have to shut my eyes all right <laughs> so funny. Is it, your turn away as i'm doing that i know i know um so uh, but i have i talked about the winchester house on pod I don't think so. Okay. So in San Jose, California, which is like between here and San Francisco, there's uh, the Winchester house and it's this big mansion mm -hmm. owned by, um, I think her name was Mary Winchester. Sorry, everyone. Um, I'm on a Mary Todd Lincoln kick right now. So everyone's name is Mary. Um, Mary Todd Lincoln was Abe Lincoln's wife. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Um so so she was the um beneficiary of the winchester fortune mm -hmm. winchester guns being the prominent yeah uh yeah um or like the winchester 
bar in Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> is this also why, you know that TV show Supernatural? Is that why they're called Winchesters? Do you know? Prob no, well, may it's entirely possible. There's probably some sort of connection. Yeah, okay. Okay, probably. just in case you need. Mm -hmm. So she, um, she essentially employed people 24 hours a day. And there, the theory, the theory goes, so I actually dragged my children and my husband there a couple of years ago. And it was like the best thing ever. Um, she would, she thought that she was being visited by spirits of people that were killed by Winchester guns. Oh, wow. Rifles. Mm. Um, and so she would be visited. She would go into these trances and draw a picture of this place, whatever room or area this person had passed in. And then her builders would build it. And then she would go in, talk to the spirit, get the spirit to chill out or like, you know, depart. Everything's cool. Sorry that, you know, my bullet, the bullet of my family killed you. Um, wow. And then if, but there's also like the number 13 is everywhere in the house. And she had all these like, um, they look like spider web stained glass, but there, there were 13 webs in each one, 13 doors in this room, 13 windows in that room, like 13 everywhere. There were doors to nowhere. There were stairs to nowhere. You'd have a door that would open up and you'd look down and it would be like the floor below you. Um, it, it, it's really incredible. Like mm. she was really something else. Um, but if the spirit needed to be contained within the room and never let out, then she would nail 13 nails around the door and then like walk away. Oh, interesting. But then once the, the spirit had departed, if it went well, then they would tear that room down and then start building the next one. And this went on for like 30 something years. She employed the whole town. They would grow, you know, uh, she had a huge orchard and all the, the food from the orchard would, would go to feeding the town. And so we, we did the tour and there's a spirits and spirit tour that I want to do next time you come to town because okay. <laughs> you can drink alcohol and then like, really they'll take you on a spirit, a spirit tour, but we okay. did the spirits without spirit tour or spirit without spirits. And um, we're walking through and, you know, explaining all the things. And it's a, it's like a, they're, it's like a two hour the house is weird and huge and weird and there's actually a movie mm -hmm. called the winchester that you should see or just okay. called winchester that you should see but there were certain points in the tour where she would be talking and the lights would dim and come back up and she would look and be like okay like this happens sometimes in this room or like we there but there was at one point like the lights went like really went dim and came back up and she like her face went white and she's like I've never had an experience in this room before that this is a new one for me kind of thing and like I get it maybe someone is turning the gas down or whatever yeah. but I also uh I, I just I love I eat that shit for breakfast like I think we talked about it before because we did an episode of myths and things like that. And okay, maybe I did. Sorry. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about just generally our attitudes towards it, which is, I think is very much is, you know, we're both X-Files kids. Yes, We definitely. want to believe, you know, that there is something out there. So it's, it's, I, but, and the problem is that it's such a, uh, it, it attracts like con men and like fraudsters, yeah. unfortunately, because. Yeah. Especially because, like, you know, whenever you're thinking about mediums and you're thinking about this connection and, you know, so many people with, you know, relatives or, or, or people that they care about that have died, there's unfinished business. And this, like, the temptation to be able to kind of maybe not resolve this, but kind of, like, be able to hash out something that you didn't get to whenever they were still alive is such a kind of a an evocative thing. And you can see why it's it, it is still so prominent in both our kind of cultures yeah i've done that before not the normal psychic way but i've done um like shamanic energy healing okay where i met with someone and basically she went it into it's um it's a native american type of shamanic journey where there's drumming and then they 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 basically drop into the spirit world and um, tell you what they see uh -huh. and so um basically it was I could because I couldn't I couldn't figure out why I couldn't move through through my grief for, for, from yeah. my dad passing away and um so she told me some things that 
made some sense and some things that didn't make some sense. Um, but I also think that um, timing m matters. And a lot of times, maybe the yeah. message that you're getting, you really don't need to know for like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so I have done that. I mean, and I think, you know, and we talked about this in regards to tarot cards, I think before as well. It's like as a like therapeutic tool, there's some real value yeah. there. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. but again, it's just, it's relying on somebody not being a bad actor and not like, you know, using this as a way to like manipulate somebody, you know, but it's a, uh, it's an interesting one, you know? And, um, but like, I think, you know, certainly from my point of view, seeing posters for local psychics and seeing posters for, you know, all this sort of thing just makes me so skeptical against it, you know, and, and, and the very idea of it. And, um, it makes, you know, it tough to believe in the, it is an idea just because because of that i think more than anything because there because there's so many like i probably call men involved in yeah. It, yeah 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 you know, yeah i think um so we like call them yeah snake oil salesmen yes <laughs> i love that term does it come from ireland probably <laughs> no i'm pretty certain it is a an american old west term i think mm. I think, but I mean, who knows? Where the Wells Fargo wagon would come in with all the goods. Yeah. Roll up, roll up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um so I I would I would if there was a, a psychic coming in to town and like gathering people, I would totally go. You should yeah. go next time. Will you do that for me? Uh yeah. <laughs> will I do that? Yeah, I might I, I will mean... sponsor your experience. Okay. I might <laughs> Like, I would be curious to see. It's like, you know me, I'm not like a super kind of angry person, but I would worry that if I thought somebody was getting taken advantage of, I might, you know. You'd sit there and harump the entire time. Yeah. And uh -huh. I don't think I would say anything. I'm too much of a card, but <laughs> I might be, you know, angry about it. That would be my concern. But um, yeah, I, I it's I, like, I think as far as I know, it's not something that I have done either. Um, there are, um, you know, people who do this sort of thing who are mediums who go to parties and stuff like that as well. And you can pay them to come to your party and um, they'll do like readings and stuff like that there. And one of my good friends, one of the, one of the people I was, I was spending time with recently, her mother's a medium and um, she like, but like, she doesn't really it's not what she does she has these strong connections and she has like feelings from people sometimes and she doesn't always say and sometimes if she she thinks that she needs to say she um will ask them first say to them look i really think that i have something i need to say to you but if you don't want me to i completely, completely respect that and walk away and i find that so interesting because that's not her job that's not the, something that she's doing to uh, uh like to, as i said to, to earn money or to like you know to try to like get somebody on the hook or whatever so you know and i've, I've talked to her she's a nice lady she's straightforward I, I and you know so what's that about you know what i mean if, if this is all like bullshit <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so i know two people for sure that have um they have no reason to not be honest with me we actually the one of the, these people is a mutual friend of ours uh-huh uh-huh who does the same is just knows things has 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 the you know the gift and yeah. um and then another one is one of my best friends from college um who would just be like call me and be like this is like this is about to happen and mm -hmm. nothing bad usually but i would be like oh i did find 50 bucks like in my coat pocket kind of thing yeah like go check your pocket mm. in your in your jeans that you wore last week kind of thing um or like she would know when a relative was about to pass away and she would be right and then our mutual friend um so will sometimes still send me a message and be like i was thinking about that or i had a dream about this and i think that this means this 
you know, if that means anything to you, great. If not, you know, let it, let it, let it just move through yeah. you or whatever. And that it's like, what is turned on in them that they're able to do that? Or what is it about their brain that they're able to channel or pull in or see yeah. or feel? And I know it's not, it, there are different types of, um, it, it, there are different types of ways that people get messages Mm -hmm. you know, through sound or through touch or through, you know, their mind's eye or through hearing something or seeing. Um, and so it's like, they're, it's like, like, um, there, there are terms for each one and I'm not going to go into that, but I just wonder like, what is it about them that, that allows them to just be more open? I think, and like we've talked about this before as well, probably in a number of different topics. Is you know, is it, it to me, it comes down to there is so much of this world and how like reality and all that stuff works that we have no idea about like next to no idea. Like we are, even though you know we're fairly advanced scientifically, it is probably only like a tiny fraction of uh, how this all works. You know, so it's like it's um. I think kind of foolish to completely write it off, you know, or to be like, oh, well, you know, science suggests that <laughs> this sort of right. thing's impossible. Because, um, which is why I, you know, like to keep it on mind. Of, and I think I probably was more like that myself, certainly in, in younger years, but I've kind of moved past that. And I'm very much like, wouldn't this be interesting, you know, or, or, or um, find, I, I, I just, you know, listen and, see what comes my way, you know, and, you know, you can disregard some of it, but there might be some value there. Yeah. I think I was similar. Like I was like, I don't believe in anything. Nothing, nothing's real. Nothing really exists. Like yeah. nothing happens after death. Da, 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 da. And I, I mean, I was like that for a long, I think really it was probably when I was like deciding to bring life into the world. And also when I was really starting to get into yoga, mm -hmm. And so I want to just like, there are aspects of yoga that I think as a teacher, you probably have to work through and not um, be like, all right, everyone, let's talk about chakras, <laughs> right? Pay class. Cause there are sure. a lot of people that don't necessarily vibe with that um, yeah. or vibe with meditation. Yeah. And so you're like, we're doing a breathing exercise, but really it's meditation. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing you've got to talk about the connection of breath and movement and even like but what you're really saying is like you know like let's align your chakras yeah. and like meditate to get to towards enlightenment yes and let's tap into be. something that we maybe don't always tap into and like i mean even with you know something as simple as like a namaste at the end of um class and like you know even that is tough going sometimes like i'll do a namaste like and so many yoga teachers I know just don't do them anymore. I still do it every time because I think that like, and you know, certainly once I kind of uh, understood what the true intention of Namaste was, which was, which is rather um, uh, the light in me reflects the light in you. I think that's really kind of special and lovely. And I kind of want to keep saying it. And I'm going to keep saying it, you know, like I, if anything, I'd like to kind of step that up and I'm, I'm making baby steps towards it. Like I think I've talked to you before about, uh, I've got to, pronounce it wrong, wrong but ohm 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 thank you <laughs> i love the ohm like and like it's there's something so kind of um i'm sure this is not the first time i'm talking about it but like whenever you're all doing it at the same time in a room full of people and your voice becomes indistinguishable from everybody else's for certainly for me it feels like a kind of magic they told us in our yoga school and forgive me everyone if, if you've listened to every episode ever and you know exactly what i'm talking about and my, maybe i'm repeating myself i don't think we said this on pod okay the sound maybe you can explain it better but the sound like if you get out in space and yeah. all the garbled sound from earth kind of funnels into one sound the mm -hmm. sound that it makes is ohm yeah so the universe uh, mm -hmm. yeah it's the sound of the universe and so i think um, I, I agree with you. Obviously I want to honor the, the yogic culture and, you know, its origins. And I feel like namaste, it's kind of like, 
by ending your practice with that, it you're you're spanning time. Yeah. And by honoring that practice, it's almost like that word is just a connecting and connecting and connecting and connecting and connecting yeah. each of us. And I like that a lot. Yeah. I will never stop. And I mean, it's one of the, like, I mean, I, I think I, I, early on when I was first teaching, I was trying to alms immediately, or oh, oh, uh, I can't say it, but I was trying them immediately. And I wonder, I wonder if it's sound that, that earth is emitting is alm. It's my tongue. It's my tongue. That's what's going on. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, so I, uh, so like I'm, and you know, he, like and you talk about the breath work as well and i think that's such an important thing in terms of um and it's hard to like you thought of like almost present it in a very kind of practical way a lot of the time for people to really kind of like you know deal with it because so, i've been doing a little bit of cover for um pilates class this week and i don't know how to teach pilates <laughs> i told the person i was gonna this. say i was uh, like did they teach us that and I was, and I, but I've done a few Pilates classes and they have always been quite yoga focused anyway. And so like, even within that, and I, I've done it twice. The first time I just kind of threw into it and I was like, I really need to explain this. So I, I kind of set it up this morning with, you know, look, I am predominantly a yoga teacher, but I do a, and I have, I have taught Pilates before, a white lie. And yeah. I, classes that I have attended, um, Pilates classes I've attended have always been more of a yoga focus. So that's how I do my Pilates. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do, we've got a combination of Pilates and we've got a combination of yoga. And AKA we're the, doing yoga. Yeah. I mean, AKA we're doing, <laughs> we're doing fast yoga. But like within that framework, I'm like, how do I begin and start this? Because I'm so used to doing like a breathing meditation to begin with and one to end with. But I just, I just did it again. I was like, look, I, I really think, I think that the connection of breath and movement is so important in everyday life. So I, I always like to do this at the end of my kind of practice, you know, beginning and end. And first one definitely was, it, it was okay. It was fine. But the second one, I really feel like they're starting to kind of get, get it a bit. And they're kind of like starting to like appreciate where I'm kind of coming from. You know, it's always tough to win people over, especially whenever they have a very kind of focused idea of what they're looking for from those classes. But, you know, mm -hmm. it was, in, it's been interesting doing it. I, I only have one more to do this week, but over the course of that period, just seeing people, you know, maybe easing up and releasing into something a wee bit different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that it's so hard for, for us to get, and I'm speaking for myself too, like to just get out of my own way. Yeah. Um. So I have a question. Have you ever heard of like sacred geometry? I have. I have. I couldn't really tell you much about it, but yes, so it's basically, um, and I'm just pulling this from my mind garden, it's like uh -huh. certain geometric shapes and certain geometric proportions, and it's associated with the belief of a divine creator of the universal, like, geometry. I got a birthday card with some sacred geometry on it, I just realized. Did you? Whoa. So it also has to do with like certain like religious structures will have a yeah. lot of sacred geometry. I'm guessing like churches, mosques, temples, altars. Yeah. I'm guessing like it, it literally says here, like sacred groves, village greens in my mind garden, pagodas and holy wells. So I'm guessing in Ireland, there's probably a, quite a bit of that. If you look. Yeah. Almost certainly. Um, And also like pa there are patterns you find it's like the golden or it's the fibonacci sequence yeah which is like it's not the golden mean i'm messing all of my things up but basically like the fibonacci if you just google fibonacci sequence and nature you will see like a fern opening yeah. is the same pattern as a seashell is the same pattern as a nautilus is the same pattern yeah. same pattern and all these repeating patterns in nature and i'm just using one um and then like once you really um a microscope out and looking at you know what a feather looks like and start seeing oh my god like there's you know ferning going on there too um and this is like way more information than anyone needs to know, but like um, women, when they're fertile, their spit actually ferns. 
Are you interested? Isn't that cra- yeah? So like it creates that same Fibonacci sequence pattern. It's pretty crazy. Wild. Yeah. It's so yeah. Yeah, that is really nuts. It's and it's something you know. Not to I, blow your mind or anything. No, it should be. It's oh, it's pre blown. It's already gone. <laughs> uh, I it is something I think, and I've I've looked into it before, but it's been years um, since I I've even kind of looked at the, the concepts in, in terms of sacred geometry. But it's a fascinating one. That's one I think I'm going to look into a bit more. I feel like this is very much a subject that we're going to get a lot of people writing to us about, kind of telling us about it after this. I hope so. By all means, please do. Teach us. Teach us. You know. um, Yeah, that's... Yeah, I I haven't... I really haven't given it any thought. And then you mentioning it and me looking at those... I just had a quick look at some some, uh, images connected to it. And I was like, whoa, I got a birthday card for that, aren't I? (laughs) Mm -hmm. See? So... See? See? Everyone? You skeptics? Right. But it's almost like kind of like I was like, sometimes the message, like you'll get the message, but you won't realize what it means until later. Yeah. You got the right. card and now I'm all like, blah, blah, sacred geometry. It's and like, then you're like, oh whoa. my God. Whoa, man. Let's go watch Jason Confused again. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> um, I mean, that's always a good excuse. Um, I think... Um, so, I mean, I, I, I had written down here and you'd already mentioned it. If we like... Do we want to talk about tarot a little? Sure. Um, so like I, I mean, I've had a few readings and somebody we we knew, we know. I mean, I've had, I, I think I probably had them years ago when I was quite more skeptical about the whole idea. I think I've talked about this on pod, so I'm not going to belabor it too much, but I labor away. Last, yeah. <laughs> they like it. <laughs> I had one last year that I thought was really useful in terms of. And I, I know, and I've talked about it, and I think that this is maybe just a way in, like as a therapeutic tool, as a way to take things that are going on internally, bring them out into the real world, and look at them from a different angle. And I think anything that lets you do that, there's a value to it. And that's what tarot was for me, and that's been a, a good way for me to like get back into it, you know, to like think about it again from a from a, a, a different perspective. Mm-hmm. I I bought a deck and I bought the book that explains mm-hmm. um what each like because every card has uh I mean so much symbolism and meaning um and if it's reversed it can mean one thing and if it's upright it, it can mean something else mm-hmm. um but what I kind of am recognizing is that it's situational yeah completely so whatever is in the book um doesn't really it's like as long as i get the gist of what the card basically means yeah that's 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 all i need it's not like the well the book says this so this is what it you know because what is true for for you and what's going on in your life is totally different than what what's going on in someone else's exactly. life and i love that about tarot yeah that um it really is read for the person that is sitting in front of the reader yeah and and you can read you can read tarot for yourself and when i was really sick i, w- I would pull up i would do like five minutes of yoga and just like move my body a little bit do some breath work and then i would pull a card and be like because like trying to figure out like what's going on on in my body why am i why can't i heal what is going on and like that was a pr- it, it it kept me from <laughs> um it, it it gave me um something outside of therapy something outside of myself it gave me sometimes hope mm-hmm. sometimes um grounding sometimes um what you were saying where it's like okay well maybe it's maybe it's all of this is happening for for a different reason than you've even thought about and it was i i, I will say like i think that that has been a huge part of my healing journey yeah and why i'm on the other side of like you know being in a really bad place yeah um so i i highly recommend getting a reading getting a deck getting a book and just Mm -hmm. like dabbling in it or having a friend that can do it for you (laughs) absolutely and i mean like even as a way to like pop you out of a certain sort of you know because it's easy to get stuck in a rut or a groove or whatever and just to kind of pop you out of that and maybe kind of like come at it from a different way um 
you know i think there's i i do i do think there's real value there yeah and like when we were in portugal with our friend and she, she would do the reading mm -hmm. and then she would ask me like what i thought and like we had total two totally different interpretations a lot of times granted i had the book but, but she is like she knows everything she's read everything she's she's a real deal and i yeah definitely definitely not so it was so interesting to be like well the book says this but like it's it's totally different you know for Andy's situation and she read the cards a totally different way and I was really like I was like it was kind of like a blow my mind moment yeah I was like oh and I mean it, it's so true and it's like you know <clears throat> it's interesting to me because like a lot of the systems that we take a lot of stock in that kind of you know guide our lives and things like that like once you kind of see the underpinnings of some of them you're kind of like oh holy shit these are kind of all made up and kind of fucking wacky as well you know? <laughs> i mean like <laughs> you know most terrifyingly our our uh, money systems and i only have a very basic understanding of this are kind of based on like projected money rather than actual wealth in any major way shape or form it's it's all kind of you know loosey goosey you know payoffs really oh <laughs> so you're just not? you're just trillions of dollars in debt your country you yeah know? like what does that even mean i know <laughs> it's it's kind of wild but it's you know so i mean like you know if we you know uh, i suppose the way what i'm saying is that if we can embrace kind of things like that you know why not embrace some other stuff as well and see mm -hmm. see if it has anything to offer you do you know what i mean rather than mm -hmm. i think just completely um dismissing it you know but again, but maybe don't go to like a psychic in like a local leisure center. <laughs> right. Maybe don't do that, but you know, <laughs> maybe find your own way in. So I just want to name a few things that I've like gone down the wormhole about. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done Chinese medicine energy testing. Mm -hmm. We're based on like how you move your, and they my you, you can get this done with like food. They can like the way your body responds and your muscles respond to movement they're like, oh, you're allergic to this, or you shouldn't eat sugar, or yeah. So, um, in Chinese energy medicine, um, you're either earth, air, fire, water, or metal. Oh wow. Uh huh. Um, I think in other um types of energy medicine, um, aether is uh yeah the other element which is like sky or atmosphere. It's like the thing, the thing in between. Yeah. Um, so I had energy testing done and I was, I was, I tested, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm metal. I was very disappointed to under, understand that it means I'm cold. <laughs> it means I'm like cold, hard to reach, uh, you know, like I'm basically like Angelina Jolie is a metal. <laughs> if that helps you get an idea. All right. So, Pretty but I sweet. think it's, I am right. But so I was like, no, I want to be like earth or, or water. Cause like they have all these personality traits that I want, but it's yeah. like you are who you are. But I think it's like, some of it can be situational. And whereas like, I was like very type a, like got to get this done. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not, I don't really have a job that requires me to do anything or be anywhere. And so I think I'm definitely less of like a hardcore type a you know yeah. my way kind of person i would like to think um and it also like we're all the things right so it helps like, me be like let me bring up some of these other traits in myself so that i can be a more well-rounded nicer person it, it, it makes me think a little bit about when we did our yoga teacher training one of the exercises we were divided into uh vada oh man so this is uh ayurvedic groups yes. right what are they again i can't it's terrible vada kapha vada kapha mind garden it andy so know, it's like is it uh, three or four and i'm trying to three. like there were like three vada kapha or I'm trying to remember andy's mind three garden doshes yeah i'm on it i'm on it pitta 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 okay so you're a Vada. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a Vada, but they kept moving me around. around. Yeah. But th that's what I was going to say. Like in that, um, 
uh, like you know thing that you know they were they were kind of putting us in, in places not because they necessarily thought we belonged in them but just to kind of see how we would react to being placed in those uh, groups you know which I thought was really interesting for better or for worse it was an interesting sort of exercise mm -hmm. and I took an online I've taken several online tests yeah me too mm -hmm. most times I get all three yeah I think which, yeah to me I was kind of pissed off because it's like uh, with Ayurvedic medicine, like you're one, you're, you're one of these and it just, just dictates like the temperature of water you want to drink based on your, it's, it's called your dosha, the mm -hmm. type of food you want to eat based on your dosha. And it's, it gives you like if, to be, if you want to be your most healthy self, this is a way to go about doing it. Yeah. Um. So getting your dosha checked and tested and, and assigned. Um. But if you're all three, it's like, I don't even know what to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So that's true. So, that's a bit of a cop out that kind of uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I I don't know because we they had us dress up like vadas and be silly. Yeah. yeah. That's basically what I decided. I am. It was good fun. Yeah. We. That's like we I want to be be an Andy's group. We had a great picture. A great picture <laughs> from that day. That was a good. Um, that was a good one. So yeah. Um. I don't know if you've got anything else you want to talk about. I have one last thing. Um. But I don't know if you've got anything. Um. I guess my question for you would be like, what areas of like mysticism are you interested in like looking more into uh, or studying you know, more of? I, I want to like more than anything, get deeper into like meditation and the places that can bring me more than anything Yeah. in terms of my personal journey, because it's something that I have you know, struggled with in terms of finding an effective way to meditate. I've mentioned this to you before, but like I, the most effective meditation I find um, outside of like some stuff I do to like entertain myself is, um, was we, we did a, a, we chanted for like 30 minutes as part of our yoga teacher training. And afterwards I felt electric i was like in such a like higher place i was like so talkative i was actually like singing to people i think and it was it was nuts and it was just it just it just triggered something in me that i just have not found in any other sort of way so like i'm you know i'm really keen to maybe like try a kirtan at some point that's something i should look into this summer actually you know that sort of thing i i, I think it would it's it's something that really kind of speaks to me mm -hmm. what about you <laughs> Um, I have to tell you my experience from that chanting circle. Yeah. 30 minutes of chanting. I like, I was so pukey. I was mm. so nauseous. Like Karen was like, our friend was like, I think you need to lie down. I couldn't handle it. I was like, it's not my, that's not my med medicine meditation. Or maybe it's like something I need to break through. I don't know. I need to do more of, I did end up going to a curtain, which is like, um, it's basically that type of chanting um sometimes it's like call and answer so yeah. it was a two-hour concert um by this woman who's amazing um and it was really i highly recommend highly recommend going and a lot okay, of times yeah, yeah. they're in churches but you'll you'll have people that will tour through yeah um yeah and i'm sure you'll get people that go through belfast so yeah i say so well yeah, yeah. probably Ireland, at least anyway yeah, find yeah. Them somewhere but yeah um so the last thing I had, and it was the first thing that I wrote when I researched in this topic, was <clears throat> medium. I'm more of a large these days. I was going to make those jokes too. <laughs> I, I was like, me <laughs> you were like mediums? And I was like, does he mean like paint versus drawing? <laughs> or does he mean like psychics? <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, that was absolutely worth going back for, I think. Uh, that was we, can, we, can, full, we can all agree. Circle. Yeah. Okay, I <laughs> think that wrapped up that subject nicely. With a dad think, joke. Yeah, with a with a bad joke. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Beth I said dad joke, but you said bad. So oh, yeah, you know, a little bit yeah. of calm, a little bit of calm, B. Mm -hmm. Um, so we come to the end, and always our favorite question, Beth. I've got to ask yourself, got to ask you and myself, uh, what's been bringing you joy this week? So my mom was in town visiting, and the kids got to pick their thing that like their favorite thing to do, favorite restaurant, favorite thing to do. And then I was like, okay, I want to pick my favorite thing to do, my favorite restaurant. So we we took her to the Midway aircraft carrier. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Is that San Diego? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so like, I think I'll uh, basically it's like a float. Like aircraft carriers, like unless you're on one, you don't quite get a sense of just how fucking big they are. Mm. And so they'll house like 1400 people. The kitchen, I, I was like, where's the galley? I want to see the galley. Because they serve 13,000 meals a day. Can you imagine Why? that? Yeah. And there's like, captain's quarters there's first admiral quarters they each have their own chef and their own kitchen it's nuts it's like it's it's nuts it's nuts it's yeah, it's, a, it's a float it's a floating city so yeah when you come next uh, i'll drag you there and then we went to my favorite restaurant which um it's got like an open air like you walk in it's like typical like hipster cute san diego restaurant and then they 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 were like do you want to sit inside or outside and i'm like we want to sit outside because it's literally under the flight path for the airport nice <laughs> so you're eating and like you're having wayne's world moments every like two or three <laughs> minutes <laughs> where you stop the conversation and then we all started a game where you're trying to like guess which airplane is about to fly over you're like delta southwest but it's just like where else in the world does that ever happen? Where it's you're like, like eating fine cuisine, drinking fine cocktails, and also like getting your yeah. your jet fuel, yeah, in your it. food, light dusting. It's just <laughs> so, nice. It's nice. So I, nice. Felt, I felt actual joy, and it was really that's nice. Good. That's good. That's good. That's lovely. Um, I mean, you? I think I've talked a bit about the stuff that's been bringing me joy recently. I, you know, it was nice. I'd say that music festival was great fun. And made some new friends and it was just you know it was just a lovely experience with some lovely folks um but because i don't think i've done one in a while i'm and, I, and i've been able to start watching tv shows again which is a big kind Dead. of revelation for me so i've been really enjoying the sympathizer Ooh, okay is the is that the one with robert downey jr it is so it's him okay. he's kind of four different roles it's not really about him but he is it's essentially about this kind of uh double agent who who's working uh throughout the, the vietnam war i've only seen a couple of episodes so far but it's really fantastic and I, okay. I i highly recommend it okay what platform hbo so i guess okay yeah uh, max for you guys and i think now for people in the uk huh. yeah something like that yeah but all yeah, right the sympathizer it's very good and like it's it's not the robert downey jr show it's like he's great in it but it's not it's not all about him which i'm I'm kind of grateful for so it's 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 definitely worth a look he's just like i think he's probably my favorite actor at this point yeah he has such a unique energy like nobody yeah. else is like Literally. him really no and it's pretty rad yeah well that's good yeah i'll take a look at it my tongue is uh I know it's done. I can tell you're like, will you gargle with salt water? Yeah, I will. It's a good call. Okay. Actually, I haven't done that like yet. Every couple of hours and it'll, within a day or two, you'll be better. Okay. Okay. Tongues okay, heal okay. very quickly. Yeah. I know. I know that they do. It's, and it's frustrating when it's not because it's like, I do so many jobs where I have to talk <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so it's not, it's been a tough few days, but you know, whatever. Ooh. I know, Perandi. <laughs> Here's the tiniest tissue. And the worst the tiniest, tiniest violin. violin. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay uh just a reminder to folks our um website has some new photos on it um and it's bendypodcast.com that's where you can access us on all different platforms check out our merch and see what we're up to because mm -hmm. we're always doing stuff um and do check out uh and oh um Andy did send me the the walk information. I'm gonna oh, put yeah. that up today. Awesome. So that'll go up on the main page. And if you would like to donate, please do. Please, that'd be awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so as always, then we'd like to remind you to <clears throat> try this with your tongue. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh no. I <laughs> know. Even Are we the, oming? Uh, yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> this is this is our own, right? Our own personal. <laughs> All right. Bye. Love, Love you guys. You. Bye. 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 That was good. That was good. That's so interesting that you have touring psychics. Right? I love it. Okay. 
Uh, you did good. Export. This is episode 36. I know. What was the kids? What, huh? what was it? They what was it? The, the kids wanted to do. You said uh, they wanted to go to the safari park to see the rhinos. Nice, because we've got like twenty rhinos thirty minutes from our oh, house. Yeah, and they're white. They're like southern or northern white rhino, whatever the ones that are like okay, almost to the brink of extinction. But they're mm -hmm. like they're they're using them as surrogates. So okay, putting mm -hmm. embryos in to try and bring them back, and then California Pizza Kitchen. Hell yeah. <laughs> CPK, baby. CPK. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I know. Yeah, I, it was it was good, I know. It's like, all 